Hi and welcome to another video. Today we're going to cover some 3D printing topics. If you remember the end of the last video, I was uh, busy printing this bracket that I've designed to hold the SGF 4000 action cam on the inside of the door of the DaVinci 1.0 printer. Um, I have uploaded this to Thingiverse, I will put a link in the description to it. You can see photographs and things of how it mounts in and you can still close the door on it and things. And I'll just cut some footage here of some time lapse that I took with that uh, camera. And as you can see, it looks pretty nice. It, it does form the time lapse pretty well. Uh, the only problem is the SGF 4000 camera, it just takes one picture. It doesn't create a video file, it creates just a load of pictures and you've got to use Movie Maker or something to join them together and to create a time lapse video. But uh, once you've done that, it looks pretty nice. I mean, I, I quite like it. And the part that I've printed was this elephant. Now, this elephant isn't on Thingiverse, I don't think. It's on Umagine. Umagine was pretty new to me. I just discovered it watching another YouTube video and this guy mentioned it. Um, it's exactly like Thingiverse, but I, I believe it's Ultimaker's version of Thingiverse, where Thingiverse is MakerBot's version of file sharing. I, I don't know. That's what I believe it is anyway. But what's special about this? Um, apart from the fact that it's printed in E3D's everyday white ABS material, which, as you can see, see if I can get a close-up here. I'll just do that so you can try and focus on it. As you can see, it prints really nice. Oh, dear. Prints really nice, as usual. This is a one-piece print assembly. What do, you, what do I mean? I mean, the legs are captured, and they move. And that was printed out all in one piece. You just saw it in the footage get printed out. Now, the observant of you will realize that this has got a high gloss finish. That's because I used acetone vapor finishing on it. Um, it's a bit of a story behind that. I'll get to it in a minute. But when I printed this part, the head moved and, and now and now it doesn't. But the legs, the legs move fine. Uh, just to note at this point, the legs are meant to be joined together. You can't move them independently. I didn't know that when I first took the part off the printer. These bits in here had fused. You just got to like crack it off. And um, I did one at a time and nearly snapped the, snapped the legs off. So if you're going to print this part, I'll put the link in the description again. And um, you can give it a go and, and see how you get on. Now, on the vapor finish, I'm going to talk about Chinese food. Chinese food? Vapor finishing, really? Yeah. I had Chinese food the other day and it came in this lovely box. And I noticed on the bottom of this lovely box, I'll try and show you. It says here, PP. That means this lovely box is made out of polypropylene. And it was free because my Chinese food came in it. So what's the big deal about polypropylene? Polypropylene is resistant to acetone vapor. So I use this box to acetone vapor finish this part. Now, it's a very simple process. Um, I'm going to use the standard disclaimers here. Acetone vapor is very, very dangerous. It's highly flammable, it burns with an invisible flame. You won't know you're on fire until you're on fire, and that's a bad thing. Don't try this at home, don't do anything that I'm saying. This is just something that I've done to share with you. This is not an instruction, this is not, um, um, what do they call them, oh, a guide on how to do it. This is just me telling you what I did. Please be very careful with acetone vapour. It's not good stuff. So, anyway, that's out the way. Great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, this part, it printed in this orientation with the legs flat. Now, you're supposed to print it on a raft, and I didn't... <laughs> typical bloke, I didn't read the instructions. I just printed it out, and the first twice it failed because when it prints the first couple of layers, as you can probably see, there's a lot of, like, really tiny bits of detail in there, and they didn't stick to the print bed, obviously, because they're tiny. Um, so, I had two failed prints with it after the first layer. I mean, it's not too bad when a print fails at the first layer. You just kind of, like, clean the bed, re-glue, and go again. But definitely print it on a raft, and then just kind of, like, whoosh, the raft off when you're finished. You know what I mean? That'll be absolutely fine. So it printed in that orientation, so I thought I'd vapor finish it in that orientation. And the way I did it was I just got a little bit of tin foil, just about kind of like, you know, about, about that size. Put it in the bottom of the box. Because when you vapor finish, what the vapors actually do, they melt the ABS plastic 
Uh, uh, finishing vin- finish only works on ABS, by the way. It doesn't work in PLA. It doesn't work on um, copolymers or all like that. Just just ABS, so be careful. You know, don't leave it in there for days and days and say, it's not melting, it's not working, because it's probably PLA or something. But yeah, so on a bit of tinfoil, and then a couple of cotton pads. Basically, the setup was... Yeah, I'll, I'll open it, show you. If I, if I can't... Good fit. Basically, the setup was... That was in there, flat like that, on a bit of tin foil, a little bit of cotton wool here, a little bit of cotton wool, where you got a little bit of cotton wool here, um, with acetone on and the lid on. And what you'll see is over time, you, I don't heat it up. Like I said at the beginning, it's highly flammable, you know, it's dangerous stuff. I've seen people heat it up, it scares me, but I don't heat it up. There's a fly in. I hate the summer because the flies come in. Um, so I don't heat it up. And uh, what happens is, over a few hours, it was about six or seven hours or so, the um, the sides cloud up, and you can see the vapour form on the inside. And then, very slowly, you'll see the part get this... Can I catch that in the light? There it is. Get this high-gloss finish on it. And when it's kind of high-gloss, you've got to be a bit careful because it goes soft. Um, if you leave it in too long, it'll just melt through the part. Uh, with the little elephant here, the, the ears went really floppy and bent back on themselves. I had to straighten them up and, and kind of take it out the acetone vapour and kind of leave it. Because it's still sticky at that point. It's still soft, so you've got to be very careful when you handle it. And uh, after a few few more hours of it kind of like drying out, that's exactly what you get. Now, as you can imagine, these legs re- rebonded again. So I had to kind of get in and, and move them. And when I first printed this part, the head did move because there's some kind of like cool joint in here which allows it to move. But now the acetone vapors have been in there. It just where's me right there. It just doesn't move at all. Not at all. It's rigid. I don't want to take force, I don't want to snap it off. But yeah, that's a that's a pretty cool print. So this covers two things. Can the DaVinci 1.0 do a one piece? One piece? One print? assembly one printed assembly assembly in one print whatever you want to call it the answer is yes you can have articulated parts printed out in one go dead easy does the e3d everyday filament acetone vapor finish the answer is yes and i didn't even use acetone to be perfectly honest with you i used nail polish remover which was acetone based but it's mixed with like other stuff to like color it and that so it's not as potent and you know it's it still works really fine so that's it that's what i've been up to you've seen the footage from the sj4000 off the little bracket you know links in the description you've seen the elephant from uh you imagine again links in the description and you've seen what acetone vapor finish can do so as usual please like comment and subscribe i've been steve thanks for listening